So I went ahead and completely modded my Instagram app using Instafell. And let me tell you, it unlocked a bunch of hidden features that only meta developers normally get access to. For example, when I scroll through a post with multiple pictures, I can actually see the edges of the next and previous shots, giving me a smoother swiping experience. Plus, I can instantly see which of my friends liked a post since it shows me some of them in a tiny floating icon. Oh, and I can dislike comments now, which is pretty crazy as well. There's also this new Meta AI Assistant built right into my feed and a super cool throwback section that lets me pull up everyone's old posts from years ago. Hands down my favorite feature. And if I long press the hamburger menu on my profile, boom, even more Instabell options pop up. Instabell even has a Telegram channel that can show you how to do all of this. Thumbs up for starting it off with a banger. If you're sick of ads popping up everywhere, whether they're within websites or inside certain apps, there are a ton of ways you can block them. I even made a whole video breaking down the best ad blocker apps for Android. I'll link it up in the cards. But a new one just dropped called DNS Net and it's based on the OG ad blocker DNS 6.6. Except this one actually looks modern following the material you design language and gets frequently updated. Like its predecessor, DNS Net uses host files from popular sources like Attaway, Steve Black, and more to block ads, malware, and all sorts of sketchy stuff online. It sets up a VPN connection to reroute DNS traffic and filter out all the junk, and it just works. The best part is that unlike some other ad blockers, this one is completely free, open source, and doesn't require root access. And those are just two out of the 15 apps that I'll be showing off in this month's episode of the best Android apps for February 2025. Make sure to stick around to the end too, because I'm showing off the most powerful app that I've ever seen. Also, since I've been doing this series for years now, it would be a great help if you could just please drop a thumbs up and maybe even drop a comment to show your support. That really motivates me to keep going because finding these new and underrated apps every single month is not an easy task. Either way, thanks so much for tuning in. Okay, I've always been kind of jealous that Samsung phones are one of the only Androids that give you full screen reminders. I love it because when a full screen reminder pops up, I have to see it the second I turn on my screen. I can't just swipe it away like a notification or ignore it like an email. It's way more effective than those tiny dings that get lost in the endless pit of notifications I get every day. Luckily, I found a way to get this on any phone with an app called Remind Me. It lets me set reminders for anything, and when the time comes, boom, full screen alert, plus an alarm. No way I'm missing a reminder ever again. Next up, I gotta show you FeedDeck, an open source RSS and social media feed reader that's basically a modern day tweet deck, but for the news. It looks even better on desktop where you can see multiple news columns at once. In the app, you can create custom decks for different topics, so I made one for global news and another just for tech. And when I dive into my tech deck, it's like a wormhole. I've got tabs for Android, general tech, Apple, and even some of my favorite tech YouTube channels. Of course, tapping in the article or video gives me the option to open it in the right app so I can check it out even further. Plus, the best part is that FeedDeck works everywhere. Android, iOS, Windows, Mac, you name it. And it syncs across all your devices. The only downside is that it does have a seven day free trial. And after that, you'll have to pay 10 bucks per month. It's 2025 and somehow sharing between an Android and an iPhone is still a pain. So here's another app to try to fix that, QR Share. It's super simple. If you want to send a link or maybe some text you've written to a friend, whether they're on iPhone, Android, or whatever, just share it to QR Share and it'll instantly turn it into a QR code. Your friend can then scan it and boom, the link opens up right away. No need for them to install anything, no weird workarounds, just scan and go. The only thing is that it only supports text. Fingers crossed that the developer adds support for images and videos in the future. But hey, at least it's free and open source. And speaking of Apple, it's so frustrating how they make most of their wearables either bare bones or completely useless on non-Apple devices. Take AirPods, for example. Sure, you can connect them to an Android phone, but you're still missing out on a ton of features. Luckily, there's an app called AirPods Like Normal that brings back everything Apple doesn't want you to have. The only compromise is that as of now, you will need to have root to use this app because 
Apparently the developer claims that there is a bug in the Android Bluetooth stack that prevents the app from working on non-rooted phones. So that kind of sucks. But if you're rooted, you can connect your AirPods and do things like check the battery levels for each earbud and the case. You can switch noise control modes between transparency, adaptive or full on noise cancellation. You can customize the press and hold actions, toggle conversation awareness, and a bunch more. And to top it all off, it even has home screen widgets so you can control the noise modes or check the battery levels without even opening the app. It's honestly the best way to make AirPods work like they should on Android. And somehow it even works on Linux, which is pretty crazy. If you've got multiple phones or tablets, you're going to love Octi. This app syncs across all your devices and lets you monitor everything in one place. You can check every device's battery level, Wi-Fi connection, sync the clipboard, and even view all the installed apps on each device. That last one is especially useful if you switch devices often since you can instantly see which apps you need to reinstall. I especially love that Octi has a widget that lets you quickly check the battery levels of all your devices right from your home screen. The only catch is that it only lets you add up to three devices before asking you to pay a one-time fee of $5.50. If you travel a lot, you need to check out Stay Put. This is the perfect option for those times when you need to charge your phone in a public place like the airport. Just open the app, hit the stay put button, and if anyone tries to unplug your phone, it'll blast a loud alarm until you enter your password or fingerprint. It's a really simple yet effective way to stop anyone from stealing your phone while you're not looking. This next one is a little random, but it can be useful to some of you. It's called Sound Remote, and it lets you stream audio from your PC to your Android device. So if your computer's speakers are broken or you just want to listen on your phone instead, there is a perfect fix. All you have to do is download the Sound Remote server on your PC. Make sure both your phone and computer are connected to the same Wi-Fi network and then enter your IPv4 address in the Android app. If you don't know where to find that, just go into your computer settings, click on the network and internet tab, then click on Wi-Fi or Ethernet, depending on what you're using. Scroll down and you'll see your IPv4 address there. Type it in and that's it. Your PC audio will start playing on your phone. And for those wondering, yes, both the Windows and Android app are completely free and open source. Speaking of audio, Lotus is another music player that I've been really loving. It may not be the most feature packed option out there, but considering it just launched three weeks ago, it's off to a fantastic start. Its biggest strength so far is the design. It's got a beautiful material you aesthetic with buttery smooth animations. Everything just flows so well. Plus it covers most of the basics like playlists, lyric support, an equalizer, and even the ability to edit track info. Of course, there are still some things that I wish it had like a music player widget, gapless playback, and a few other things. But again, it's only been around for a month, so I'm sure the developer has more features planned. Definitely keep an eye on this one. Later Links makes it super easy to save and organize all the links you come across throughout the entire day. Maybe you find an article you want to read later, a YouTube video that's too long to watch in the moment, or you're making a list of gift ideas for a friend's birthday. Whatever it is, this app keeps it all organized in one place. All you have to do is share the link to the app, add it to a collection, and tag it if you want to make it easier to find later. That's all you have to do, and then it's saved. No fuss, no complicated setup, and best of all, it's completely free. Most phones let you record a time lapse within the camera app, but if your phone doesn't, you can use time lapse cam. In fact, I would even go as far as to say that it works even better than some OEM versions because unlike your regular camera app, time lapse cam continues to record even if you have the screen turned off. That way your battery and the recording last longer. Plus, there is no recording limit, and it's way more customizable than any regular camera app, letting you record with any camera lens on your phone, choose any capture intervals, and you can even schedule when the recording should begin and when they should stop. Pretty incredible app. Next up, we have Heart Rate. The name pretty much says it all. It's an app that claims to measure your heart rate using just your phone's camera. Sounds kind of crazy, right? But don't knock it till you try it. All you have to do is tap the heart icon at the bottom, place your finger over the camera lens, 
and after a few seconds, it gives you a reading. And to be fair, it's gotten it right a few times. But just a heads up, this isn't a replacement for an actual heart rate monitor. If you got a smartwatch with a dedicated sensor, that's gonna be way more reliable. Still, it's completely free and open source, so it's worth checking out just for fun. This next one is also pretty random. It's called Snake Game as Live Wallpaper, and it basically takes the Nothing Phone Snake Game widget and blows it up into a giant playable live wallpaper. And yes, you can actually control the snake right on your home screen. It even has a dark mode, which makes it look even cleaner. Plus, it's free and open source, pretty creative stuff. Shizu Tools is basically a Swiss army knife of crazy useful features. Now, I was actually the first to show off this app back in April of last year, but since then, it's gotten even more insane features, so we're doing a round two. First, it has a debloater, which lets you uninstall any system apps you don't want. Super useful if your phone comes packed with unnecessary bloatware. Then there's mixed audio, which lets multiple apps play audio at the same time without pausing each other. So yeah, I was able to force Spotify to keep playing music while launching a YouTube video or scrolling through TikTok. Worked like a charm too. It gets even crazier with Soundmaster, which lets you control the volume of each app individually. Kind of like the same feature that Windows allows you to do. And then there's Force PIP mode, which lets you launch any app in picture-in-picture -picture mode and have it flow over other apps, even if it normally wouldn't support picture-in-picture -picture mode. And that's just scratching the surface. This app does way more than just that. Definitely one of the most powerful apps that I've come across in a while. The only catch is that you will need to enable it with the Shizuku app to get it up and running. If you're not sure how to do that, I'll leave a tutorial in the cards that I made a while back, so that way you can set it up step by step. All right, that's a wrap. If you made it this far, you're a true fan. Tap this video right here to check out a playlist of past episodes of the best Android apps, or even click this video to explore more awesome Android content. Thanks for sticking around till the end. If I helped you download at least one app, don't forget to drop a thumbs up and get subscribed so that you don't miss out on the next episode. Catch you guys in the next one. Kapow!